Here playing with the loader with my trusty sidekick, Dylan. What are we doing today, Dylan? So, showing how you fix the loader. Okay. You made it move. So I got to messing with this thing. And I decided I'm gonna hook some gauges up and see what the pressures are where, wherever, you know, like clutch pressure, torque converter pressure. I did actually find a, a repair manual, service manual for this thing and found out what all the pressures should be. And I hooked my gauges to it and now we'll show you what we found. <clears throat> I should probably do this from the other side so you can actually see it. So it's probably going to be really noisy and I'm not going to be able to talk, so I'll probably have to voice over this later. So what we're looking at here is the right hand gauge. The one that's at about 180 PSI is the clutch pressure gauge. The one that's on the left that's slowly creeping up is the torque converter charge pressure. <clears throat> How those work is the clutch pressure takes priority and the charge pressure is kind of a bypass off of the clutch pressure. So as you see the clutch pressure go up, it takes a little while for the charge pressure to catch up to it. I want to say the spec was just off the top of my head 180 or 185 on the clutch pressure and I think 65 on the charge pressure. Think it's gonna work? Yep. Hmm. Why do you think it's gonna work? Because you just had it moving. Like, was it moving? Or was it just burning out? It was just doing a burnout, wasn't it? I've been testing it with the bucket on the ground. And it moved backwards a little bit, so I put it in forward and hit the throttle and it didn't move. I'm like, hmm, that's weird. I looked down and I watched the front drive shaft when I did it, and the front drive shaft's moving. So I look at this tire right here. <laughs> I don't know if you can tell it or not, but it's a little cleaner than it would be if it was just sitting here. But I looked at this tire and it was just sitting here spinning, spinning on the concrete. I'm guessing because you go forward and the bucket goes down, it lifts that tire off the ground. <clears throat> what does this one hooked up to? Hopes and dreams. There's no valve for that one to hook up to. So you ready to start putting this thing back together? Yeah. Are you gonna put it back together or am I? Both of us. Oh, okay. I guess we're gonna put it back together now. Oh, I'm gonna give this thing a little more juice in the little hydraulic tank. We're going to see if it drives under its own power. I know the transmission's a little low too, but I also noticed that the uh, front output seal is leaking and dumping transmission oil all over my uh, floor and giving me some oil cooled brakes, which aren't really going to work that well. So I'm going to take it out, I'm going to take it for a little spin, and I'll probably park it outside for now. Uh, I'll get to where I can clean the shop floor. I'll back it back in and take that apart and see if I can't fix that. It's probably just a seal. Worst case, worst case, I'll maybe need a speedy sleeve on the drive shaft yoke, on the output yoke. But it shouldn't be too big of a deal. Should be good. I'm rolling without a sight glass on this tank. So. 
I'm not going to be doing anything crazy where I need a whole lot of capacity for cooling the oil. And the sight glass is right behind my left shoulder, so I really don't want to take a hydraulic oil bath today. So that should give it enough to fill that cylinder anyway. So as you guys can see, this thing goes forward, it goes backwards, it does everything it's supposed to do. The one thing I haven't told you yet is what did I do to fix it? Well, I added some transmission fluid to it. As silly as that may be, I knew that it wasn't full. I never even thought about it. I spaced it out and I just didn't add any more even though I knew it needed it. Whoops. So the test drive was a success. Drives good, runs good, seems to have good power. No transmission oddities like it used to have. But the one thing I did notice, <clears throat> I don't know if you can see it or not. Heck, you probably can't even see it real good in real life. The other cylinder is a leaker. And I knew it leaked. <clears throat> I just knew it wasn't nearly as bad as the other one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try tightening this band. I might as well show you how to do it. So loosen up the jam screw that in theory keeps it from moving. And then after the jam screw is loose, I just got a blunt nose chisel. to it. So that may or may not fix the leak. 
I knew when I was going into this that this side was going to need to be rebuilt too. And actually, I feel the bottom of the rod. And it feels like somebody's taking a grinder to this one too, but it must not be nearly as bad because it doesn't leak as bad. But I guess if I have to rebuild another one, I will rebuild another one. I, uh, I will get all the parts here for it. And it's not that big of a deal to do, so I'm not that afraid of it. But I think, I think we're about to end this one. Until next time, you guys want to hit the like and subscribe and maybe even throw a comment down below. It doesn't cost you anything and, well, it'll help me. And I need all the help I can get. I mean, obviously. Have a good one.